Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through the upper limb neural tension test as a part of your cervical spine neurological assessment. The reason behind doing these tests is to put neural structures under stress to see whether or not this reproduces your patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm. For each test, go through a procedure of gradually sensitizing the nerve being tested until a potential point where your patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain have been reproduced. If those symptoms are reproduced, this allows us to confirm that there is neural tension or irritation within that nerve. So, with that in mind, it's time for our main video. Let's get clinical. So now we're going to look at upper limb tension test one for the median nerve, where we progressively apply neural tension to the median nerve to see if it reproduces the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain within the arm. And for this test, the physiotherapist is going to stand to the same side of the patient that we are testing, as if we were looking the patient within the face. So classically for this test, the arm is tensioned before the neck component of lateral flexion away from the arm is produced in order to sensitize. However, in practice, when instructing the patient to bring their ear down to their shoulder for lateral flexion, we often find that they rotate their neck instead, which does not sufficiently stress the brachial plexus or the cervical spine nerve roots. Therefore, what we're going to be showing you in this video is to place the patient's cervical spine into the lateral flex position before sensitizing the arm so that you know that the neck has been correctly sensitized for the test. So now we're going to go through the procedure for gradually sensitizing the arm. And we start by depressing the shoulder girdle. And we do that by applying a downward pressure like this with our left hand in order to depress the shoulder girdle. Next, we're going to abduct the shoulder joint to 90 degrees. And so we can bring the arm into uh, this position and then we can rest the patient's elbow on our thigh or hip. And this means that the patient doesn't have to hold their own arm up because we're doing it for them. Next, we're going to supinate the forearm by rotating it into this lateral position like so to achieve supination. Next, we're going to extend the wrist and the fingers backwards like so. And the fifth movement is to laterally rotate the shoulder joint, which you can do by just lifting up your hip. You'll see that when you lift up your hip as, in, as if you're flexing your hip, that you laterally rotate the shoulder. So that's the fifth movement. And the sixth and final movement is to extend the elbow downwards. So we go through this procedure until the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm have been reproduced. So that means if the patient has uh, have their symptoms reproduced before the elbow is extended, for example, at the fourth point, perhaps when you extended the wrist and fingers, if their symptoms have been reproduced here, you can stop the test at this point. And now we will ask the patient to bring their neck from a side flex position back into the midline. If this neck movement has reduced the patient's symptoms, we know that the neural tension has a cervical spine component to it, and so the neck will be included as a part of your treatment program. However, if the neck movement has not changed the patient's symptoms, we know that the neural tension has not got a cervical spine component to it, and the tension has been created by structures more distally. So now we're going to look at upper limb tension test 2A with a median nerve bias, where we progressively apply neural tension to the median nerve to see if it reproduces the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm. And for this test, the physiotherapist stands behind the shoulder of the arm being tested, as if we were looking towards the patient's feet. So classically with this test, the arm is sensitized before the neck component of lateral flexion is added to the test. However, what we sometimes find in practice when instructing the patient to bring their ear diagonally down to one shoulder for lateral flexion, they will instead rotate their neck. And this does not sufficiently stress the brachial plexus or the cervical spine nerve roots. Therefore, what we're gonna show you on this video is to start the test with the patient's cervical spine in 
the laterally flexed position before we sensitize the arm. And that way, we know that the neck has been correctly sensitized during the test. So let's go through it then. As the therapist, as we said, we're standing on behind the patient's shoulder. And the first movement we're gonna do is depression of the shoulder girdle. And as the therapist, we're gonna do that by pushing our hip forward onto the patient's so that we depress the shoulder girdle. The second movement is to bring the elbow into an extended position like so. And the third movement is to laterally rotate the whole arm, which we can do by rotating at the humerus. The fourth component is thumb extension, finger extension, and wrist extension, which we can do like so. And finally, we're going to bring the patient's arm into a 60 degree abducted position. So we go through this procedure until the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm have been reproduced. At this point, we ask the patient to bring their neck back to the midline. If this neck movement reduces the patient's symptoms, we know that the neural tension has a cervical spine component to it, and so the neck will need to be included within our treatment program. However, if the neck movement does not change the patient's symptoms, we know that the neural tension does not have a cervical spine component, and the tension has been created by structures more distally. Next, we're going to look at upper limb tension test 2B for the radial nerve, where we progressively apply neural tension to the radial nerve to see if it reproduces the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm. As the physiotherapist in this test, we're going to stand behind the shoulder of the arm being tested, as if we were looking down towards the patient's feet. Classically with this test, the arm is tensioned like so, in this position, before the neck component of lateral flexion to the opposite side is introduced. However, in practice, we often find that when we instruct the patient to bring their ear down towards the shoulder for lateral flexion, they instead simply rotate their neck. And this does not sufficiently stress the brachial plexus and the cervical spine nerve roots. Therefore, what we'd like to recommend is that before you sensitize the arm, place the neck in the laterally flexed position like so. And therefore, you know that the neck has been correctly sensitized before you complete the rest of your testing. So now we're going to progressively sensitize the arm for the radial nerve. The first movement we're going to be doing is depression of the shoulder girdle. And we find that the easiest way to do this is to push down with your hip to depress the shoulder girdle. And that's because it allows both of your hands to be free to perform the rest of the testing. So after shoulder girdle depression, the next thing to do is to extend the elbow fully like so. The third sensitizing movement is to medially rotate the whole arm, which you can do by turning at the humerus like so. The fourth sensitizing movement is to flex the fingers, the thumb and the wrist on the side that you're testing like so. And the final movement is to abduct the shoulder to a 60 degree position like so. So we go through this procedure until the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm have been reproduced. So that means if the patient's symptoms have been reproduced before your final sensitization, for example, if before your abduction, your patient has reproduced their symptoms, then you don't need to sensitize the arm any further. At this point, we ask the patient to bring their neck from the laterally flexed position back into the midline. And if this neck movement has reduced their symptoms, we know that the neural tension has a cervical spine component to it, and so the neck needs to be included in your treatment plan. However, if the neck movement does not change the patient's symptoms, we know that the neural tension does not have a cervical spine component to it, and instead the tension has been created by structures more distally. So now we're going to look at upper limb tension test 3 for the ulnar nerve, where we progressively apply neural tension to the ulnar nerve to see if it reproduces the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm.
And as the physiotherapist for this test, we're going to stand to the side of the patient on the same side that we're testing, as if we're looking the patient in the face. So classically with this test, the arm is tensioned before the neck component of lateral flexion is added, like so. However, in practice, when we often instruct the patient to bring their ear diagonally to their shoulder for lateral flexion, you'll often find that they simply rotate the neck instead. And this doesn't sufficiently stress the brachial plexus or the cervical spine nerve roots. As a result, during this video, we're going to start by placing the neck in lateral flexion ourselves before we sensitize the arm. And that way we know that the neck has been correctly sensitized for the test. So once we've done that, we're going to start our positioning with the patient's shoulder abducted like so. The first sensitizing movement is wrist and finger extension. And the way that we find easiest to do this is to use the back of your fingers to press down against that of the patient's so that you extend the wrist and the fingers like so. The second movement is forearm pronation, where we turn the forearm in this manner, like so, in order to pronate. And that's where the downward pressure of your um, fingers makes all the difference because it's easy to maintain the extension of the wrist and fingers as well as the forearm pronation. The next movement is elbow flexion, where we can position the patient in the flexed position, like so. Next is shoulder lateral rotation. And like we did with the upper limb tension test one, we can simply flex our hip in order to laterally rotate the shoulder like so. Movement number five is shoulder girdle depression, which we can do with our free hand like so, before movement six, which is shoulder abduction. And we can achieve this by further bringing our hip round. So we go through this procedure until the patient's symptoms of paresthesia or shooting pain in the arm have been reproduced. So that means if the patient's symptoms have been reproduced earlier, for example, in this position, once you've laterally rotated the shoulder, then you don't have to go any further in the test. At this point, we ask the patient to bring their neck back towards the midline, and we see if this reduces the patient's symptoms. If it does, we know that the neural tension has a cervical spine component to it, and so the neck will be included in our treatment program. However, if the neck movement has not changed the patient's symptoms, we know that the neural tension does not have a cervical spine component to it, and that the tension has been created by structures more distally. So to summarize this video on the upper limb tension tests, there are four upper limb tension tests to complete with your patient, including upper limb tension test 1 for a median nerve bias, upper limb tension test 2A for a median nerve bias, upper limb tension test 2B for a radial nerve bias, and upper limb tension test 3 for an ulnar nerve bias. For each test, we would suggest that you start by placing your patient's cervical spine in the sensitized position of cervical spine side flexion to the opposite side, before progressively sensitizing the nerve pathway in the upper limb. If the patient's symptoms are reproduced, bring the patient's cervical spine back to the midline and see if this reduces their symptoms. If it does, we know that their neural tension has a cervical spine component to it. If it does not, it is likely that their neural tension has been created by structures more distally. And that completes our video on the upper limb neural tension tests. Next, I'd like to suggest you have a look at our other videos within the cervical spine neurological assessment catalog, including dermatomal testing, myotomal testing, reflex tests, and palpation of the cervical spine. Thank you as always for joining us here on Clinical Physio, and we'll see you again soon.